Hey, I'm Tashaka Armstrong. Thank you for joining us for another Tech for the Rest of Us. And today we're going to take a look at some solar powered, some disaster preparedness technology, or just some things that you could actually use if you're just camping, going outdoors for the weekend. Imagine that. Uh, so we have some solar powered chargers, some solar uh, panels that we're going to take a look at that are going to help you if you find yourself without power or if you find yourself visiting somewhere, going somewhere where you're not going to have power. Uh, products that range from panels all the way to this one, which actually is essentially like a car battery, but you can charge it with a solar panel. Let's check them out. So first off, we're going to look at the Go Zero Yeti 150. This is essentially uh, a car battery with a bunch of different connections. Once the 150 is charged up, it is going to provide quite a bit of power. This will recharge a laptop, depending on the battery, two times, a tablet, again, depending on the battery, six times, smartphone up to 15 times, and some of the smaller lights, rechargeable lanterns, things like that, about 50 hours worth of charge time. You can charge this up via a standard wall outlet in an emergency situation, or again, if you go camping with this, you're gonna have a fully charged battery. So what do you get with the Yeti 150? Well, you're going to get several outputs. You'll have the charge port here. You're also going to have an indicator light that shows you, uh, you know, red or green, and it'll show you different colors based on the charging. You have a display here that shows you how much charge the device currently has. As you can see here, we're down to about one bar left uh, on the battery. You're also going to get uh, individual power buttons as I just showed you when I turned on the device. Uh, one for the 12 volt, one for the USB charging, and one for the AC charging, which is a 110 volt, 80 watt max port. Now, if you're going to plug this up in the home like I recommended that you actually do, it's gonna take you about six hours to charge it fully. This isn't something you're just gonna throw in a backpack. This isn't a battery bank that you're gonna take on a plane trip with you or traveling uh, you know, where you're flying or somewhere where you need to go light. This thing weighs about 12 pounds. It's got a very good heft to it. It feels really solid. It feels like a product that's durable and is going to last you some time. This is Goal Zero's Nomad 20. This is a set of solar panels they have a pack on the back which zips open and shut, which has kind of this uh, octopus, <laughs> this tentacled uh, layout, which allows you to plug up different chargers to the solar panel so that you can charge different devices. Uh, let's get that unzipped here so I can show you what you got. So when you open this up, you're going to get uh, this barrel charger, which will allow you to connect this up to devices like the Yeti 150. You're also going to get this little adapter here, which is going to allow you to plug in uh, USB devices so that you can actually output power to those USB devices. Again, uh, this is for your smartphones, your tablets, uh, those types of devices. This cable here is going to allow you to daisy chain multiple panels together. You know how much power they output by the name, and the Nomad 20 is a 20 watt output. That's a 20 watts worth of power output when it's in direct sunlight. So what you get here is you get a device also that has a bunch of loops so that you can hang it from different places so you can get the best opportunity to get sunlight directly into the panels. You have three large panels here that are going to gather that are going to collect that sunlight. It even has a troubleshooting diagram as you can see here right on the rear of the panels that shows you what kind of charging you're going to get out of what, what kind of sunlight. Another company we reached out to test solar panels is Instapark. Uh, they sent us the Mercury 27 uh, portable solar power supply. This is just a series of panels, much like Gold Zero's Nomad 20, except instead of 20 watts, this outputs 15 watts max, or 5 volts. It also has a 12 volt output with a 27 watt max, and you can use that with the included uh, cigarette lighter, uh, adapter, as most people know it, that 12 volt barrel charger. And that is going to plug right up to, you see, you also have uh, this inside of the pouch here, so you're going to plug that up there. Uh, you also have USB ports inside of this panel so that you can plug up your smartphone or your tablet. When you open this up, you're going to get four panels uh, as opposed to Goal Zero's three panels. Uh, these are a little smaller, a little shorter, 
than goal zeros, but again, you get the fourth panel, you get an extra panel in there uh, for powering your products. So that is Mercury 27 uh, from Instapart. It's very straightforward. One of my favorite products in this roundup, and I don't know what it is because my sons are like this, I'm like this, I know other guys who are like this and their sons are like this. There's something about flashlights. We just love flashlights. Uh, and this flashlight is quite cool. Not only is this a solar rechargeable flashlight, but like some of the other products, this solar rechargeable flashlight will recharge smartphones and tablets through the solar power. It isn't as powerful, obviously, because it has just this one solar panel compared to the three and four solar panels we've seen from other products. But what it does have, which none of the other products have, is let's say you're in an emergency situation, disaster situation, and there is no sunlight. Well, with the other products, you're kind of out of luck. With the Torch 250, it actually has a hand crank. So you can hand crank this thing and actually recharge a product. So as an absolute last resort, there's no sun, there's no electricity. You now have a manually powered rechargeable product that you can hand crank and recharge whichever devices you need to recharge. So in an absolute emergency, this is probably the most functional of the products we're looking at in this review. It comes with a USB cord directly in the device. And again, it comes with this hand crank, which just kind of pulls out from the side and you crank it that way. And you can see it's working because the light is flashing at the bottom. It's solid there, so it knows it's recharging. Um, and again, it's a flashlight. So you can push these buttons on the back of the flashlight here. And these buttons are going to give you a floodlight, a spotlight, and for the nighttime, uh, for your camping, a red light. And that red light is either solid or flashes. And for those of you who are camping, you also get uh, this hook here that will allow you to hang the light in your tent or wherever you may be. And again, if it's a disaster situation, you can hang it somewhere as well to give light to an area. The light output is pretty solid. Uh, I have all these lights on in here, so you're not really going to get a good idea, but it is a pretty good floodlight. And the spotlight is down here at the bottom. You see you get that. It has different levels of brightness, as does the floodlight. You get two levels of brightness. And then again, with the red light, you're going to get uh, a solid red and an emergency flashing red light out of that. Easily identifiable how much power you have remaining on the device. As you see, you have these LEDs back here, which light up, showing you how much charge the device currently has. Uh, in this case, you can see we have four lights, uh, which means it is currently fully charged. Here's your USB port on the back side, so that if you want to recharge that tablet or smartphone, you can do so right there, right in that port. So with this hand crank, one minute worth of cranking is going to get you two minutes worth of light. If you want to charge just the device itself without the solar power, if you're going to charge it inside the house and keep it charged up, it's going to take seven hours to charge fully being plugged into a wall socket. If you're charging it via this solar panel that's right here on the top, it's going to take you approximately 24 hours to get a full charge into this device from, a, from this solar panel. For those of you who are numbers geeks, the spotlight outputs about 180 lumens and will run you almost 15 hours on its low setting, seven hours on the high setting. The floodlight is 70 lumens and is going to run you 48 hours on its low setting, approximately 22 hours on high. So how did they fare in real world testing? The Yeti 150, I placed it outside at 9, 19 a.m., brought it inside at about 3, 10 p.m. Didn't really charge that much. It started off at 60%. And even at 3.10 p.m., it showed that it only had 60% charge. That's because, as you can see from the pictures here, when I had the Nomad 20 in direct sunlight, charged up fine. When it was in shade, it didn't charge at all. So that's why I'm very adamant with these products about saying you're going to need them in direct sunlight. Direct sunbeams have to be hitting these solar panels in order for them to charge. Now, with Goal Zero, both the Yeti 150 and the Torch 250 lights, they recommend that every three months you recharge these devices. Like I said, this one is more like a car battery, so this one will hold a charge for approximately 
three months or more, and you're going to need to recharge it every three months if you're recharging it via the wall outlet at home, which again, I recommend, I advise you to do. If you're keeping this for an emergency backup, uh, keeping it charged up is going to save you some heartache when those lights do go out when you run into that situation. And again, if you're going camping, you wanna have this thing already charged up. Same goes for the Torch 250. Every three months you can charge this puppy up and it'll uh, keep you safe if you are find yourself in an emergency situation. So the Torch 250, just so you have clear expectations of what it's capable of, it will charge some smartphones up to two times. It will only boost your tablets. So you're, don't, this is not the device that you're going to want to have on you if you're expecting to go long periods of time without power. This is an emergency device. This is to be used uh, when you need to get a quick charge, emergency charges out of your smart devices, your tablets, uh, so that you can use them temporarily. But again, with the hand crank on this, this is also going to allow you to recharge it uh, to get some juice back into it if you have no access to power or if there is no sunlight. Again, I can't stress enough that you need to have these in direct sunlight in order for them to actually charge your products. As I said in the video review, these are not going to work on an overcast day. They're not going to work in the shade. You have to have that direct beam of light hitting the panel. If you have that, you're good to go, and they will charge your devices quite well, quite fast. Very solid products. Hey, if there's any questions I did not answer in the video, anything you want to know, please leave it in the comment section below, and I will get to it. Thank you again for watching.